And welcome to part one of our two-part series on SAS spend management. I'm your host, Shannon Matthews, and for this series, we have Kylie Arnold, our resident accountant and subject matter expert. Kylie, before we dive into today's topic, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks for having me, Shannon. So my background, I spent a couple of years in public accounting and then went on to industry accounting in a couple of different industries, um, manufacturing, healthcare, and then also transportation. Um, I was in accounting in those industry roles, primarily accounting manager and a little bit as a controller for um, not quite 20 years. So altogether about 20 years in accounting, um, so a broad range of experience that I can definitely kind of pull from um, when we talk about some of these accounting um, perspectives with some of our tools. Great, well, we are glad to have you. So we're just gonna jump right in, and can you tell us a little bit about what SAS spend management is exactly? Sure, so SAS spend management is about providing transparency into your software costs and usages so that the organization can make strategic decisions about utilization and purchasing. Monitoring all of the purchasing, licenses, renewals, and other related costs to optimize all your software applications the organization uses. It's about gaining visibility to SaaS costs to stay within budget and operational efficient. As technology offerings have increased, so has our use of all types of software subscriptions and computer applications. Then COVID and the pandemic forced a shift to the remote work environment causing an even greater increase in the use of various software programs. If you think about it, many of an organization's software applications could have been purchased without much oversight, either with a company P card or maybe an immaterial purchase that didn't get a lot of oversight or approvals. It can be hard to get a handle on the overall amount of spend, money spent on SaaS because of so many different ways that it's being purchased. So this issue is especially a concern as organizations attempt to budget in the next year or if a business has been challenged to cut costs. They need to know how much is being spent on software services or SaaS. SaaS is fast becoming one of the largest expenses for many organizations, usually a second or third after personnel related costs and leases. Companies have to have visibility into where their money is going to strategically manage these costs and understand where cutting back may be an option. Some of the questions companies should ask when they are trying to manage their SaaS costs are, are we spending too much on software applications we aren't using? Or maybe are we, aren't we using these applications to their full potential? What about duplication? Is the marketing department using one application for project management and then IT or engineering is using something else? Are there any synergies if we move everyone onto the same application or try and combine some of these functionalities? Great, so SaaS or software as a service to me and probably to a lot of our viewers really sounds like more of an IT problem when you get into talking about subscriptions and software which it often is. However, can you also tell us how SaaS management directly affects accountants? So yes, software has historically been IT's purview, but bill paying and reporting on an organization's financial transactions is accountant's responsibility. The increase of IT offerings, both the number and the type of application available, combined with that swift move towards our remote workforce create a perfect form for accounting. So all of these different organizations, IT is not the only purchaser or user or even administrator of every software application that's coming in. So to get a full picture of what's being spent on software, IT and accounting really have to collaborate, compare their lists that they have, and try to determine if they've gathered all the software licenses and subscriptions and applications the company is actually using. Okay, well, that was very helpful. Thank you. So Kylie, our last question for you today is, SaaS spend management has been growing pretty rapidly over the last couple of years. So can you tell us if there are any accounting regulations or rules that apply to SaaS spend? Thankfully, the rules around accounting for software descriptions have been clarified by both GASB and FASB recently, or at least within the last couple of years. Under FASB, if a cloud computing arrangement includes a license for the use of software, so cloud computing arrangements cover SaaS and a couple of other um, a couple of other types of arrangements. 
And so with these new cloud computing arrangement um, clarification of the accounting rules, um, generally SAS is one of these cloud computing arrangements. Um, there, there's another couple of arrangements, contracts, but um, SAS is generally under that. Then for GASB, they also issued new guidance to address accounting for IT services. GASB statement number 96, subscription-based information technology arrangements, um, we call it SPEDAS for short. Um, so GASB 96 was published in 2020 to become effective for organizations with fiscal years beginning after June 15, 2022. So we're in the thick of it right now for 2023, 2024. This standard mirrors GASB 87 in that once an organization determines that they have one of these speeders, um, they establish a subscription asset and a subscription liability based on the total expected payments to be made over the subscription term. So both the, the GASB and the FASB have come up with some you know, clarification accounting for these types of arrangements. But in order to ensure compliance, accounting still needs to know what's been purchased and what's being used. So to help your organization cut costs and also to account for them correctly, you first have to identify what's being used, assign owners and users. Um, many organizations are doing that with spreadsheets and maybe an email or two to confirm what's in the spreadsheet. But as soon as that spreadsheet is built um, and all the software applications used are recorded in it, um, it's probably becoming obsolete or is already obsolete. That makes sense, and it's super unfortunate for those putting that spreadsheet together. <laughs> um, well, great. Thank you so much, Kylie. And that wraps up the first video in our two-part SAS spend series. Please stay tuned for our next video where we talk about SAS spend and management software and how it will benefit you as an accountant. Thank you.